feet like weaknesses and canvas for your strength. And my story isn't over, my story's just begun. Well, you won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Yeah, Phil, you won't define me, cause that's what my father does. Shame at the door Cause it ain't welcome 
thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for this place, God, where people find love. They find forgiveness. God, we thank you for this house. But God, we thank you for God. Only you, Lord. Only you can take a dirty, sinful life and make it clean. Only you can take a shattered life and put it back together. God, I thank you, Lord. You are so, so, so good. I see shattered.
sacrifice Your blood flowed red and made me white In my dirty rags are purified I am clean Who can testify I'm washed in the blood of your sacrifice Your blood flowed red Wash me in mercy, I am clean. There's nothing too dirty that you can make worthy. You wash me in mercy, I am clean. say amen. amen. Everybody with me say amen. amen. I want to share my heart with you for a few minutes this morning on lawlessness and fatherlessness. Lawlessness and fatherlessness. We are living in times the likes of which none of us have ever seen before. But, and we don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future in the palm of his hand. And that's what we're trusting in. There's a line from, famous line from a great novel when it opened by saying, these are the best of times and these are the worst of times. And I have this feeling that as we move forward, that that's what we're going to see. We're going to see the best of times because God is still going to pour revival out on this planet before Jesus comes back. Amen? I really believe that. I believe the, the, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. 
And I really believe that God is not done yet. I think we're going to see some things we've been praying for a long time. I think we're going to see the best of times. I, I think we're also going to see some of the most troublesome times. And you've really not seen anything yet. I think we're going to see some of the most troublesome times that we've ever seen. But I choose to focus on the positive. Because I don't know about you, you know, and my flesh is just like your flesh. And we can't allow fear to come in. But folks, as long as God is moving, I can make it. I mean that. As long as God's moving, I can make it. And we're walking with Him. But I, I do see some things that trouble me and disturb me and concern me. And my wife will tell you in all the years that she's known me and I've been preaching since I was a kid that when it, when it came, by God's grace, when it came to the last days, I've never been an alarmist. I felt like at times there were people that there were some, even some preachers and some people, they, they may have meant well, but, uh, you know, they, they were almost trying to scare people to Jesus. And uh, I know there's a place for understanding the, the wrath of God. God's wrath will come upon the earth. And I know that's true, but, uh, you know, our, our, our highest ambition is to reach people with the grace and the love of God. And... Um, but I see some things that, that alarm me. And one of the things that I see in, that we've really never seen before, and one of the things, and it connects on this Father's Day, and one of the things that I see is a spirit of lawlessness being released on the land and on the earth. Now, that concerns me because according to Scripture, and there are some things, you know, we, you, you may have a little different opinion on, on a few things, but folks, there are some things, it's just the Word. And if it's the Word, it just is what it is. And it doesn't matter your, your view, your background, where you come from. If it's in the Word, I'm not going to back up on the Word. You just got to stand on the Word. The Word will stand when the world catches on fire. Amen. You just got to stand on the Word. And the Bible tells us very clearly in Scripture that one of the clearest indications, and I'm not just talking about the Antichrist, though there will be, we, we will see the Antichrist, but the Bible says in addition to that, there is a spirit of Antichrist that is already present in the world. That's what the Word says. There's a spirit and it can manifest in all kind of ways and may look different than we ever thought, but there's a spirit of Antichrist that's already in the world. And the spirit, there will be an Antichrist who comes and embodies that, but there's a spirit of Antichrist and that spirit of Antichrist is an anti-God attitude. It's an anti-God attitude that's against everything to do with God. Come on here now that hates everything to do with God and God's people and righteousness and anything to do with the Lord. And there is already an antichrist spirit that is present in the world. It's an anti-God attitude and we see it more and more all the time. Amen. In fact, when you go back, and they'll put some scriptures on the screen, but when you go back to Daniel chapter 7 and verse 25, even in the Old Testament when it was prophesying of the Antichrist and when he would come said he shall speak pompous words against the Most High. He shall persecute the saints of the Most High and he shall intend to change times and law. Now please take note of that. One of the things he would do for a time and times and half a time he said, and then the saints shall be given in, in, into his hand. But he said, he shall intend to change times and law. So that from the very beginning, when, law, when, when the Antichrist is talked about, said he's going to try to change the laws. That there will, he will try to redefine, he will try to redefine law. 
whether it's legally on the books or moral law or righteous law, we've come to a day when adultery, when, you know, Kill, I mean, we ought to be good stewards of the creation that God has given us. But if you if you harm an eagle's egg, it, it, it's a federal crime. But you can you can murder a baby. We 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 and there's no penalty for that. And it has the blessed. We've come to a day when the Antichrist is doing his best to redefine the law. And that there is a spirit of lawlessness and and even morally that 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 you know. You, if you chop a tree down, it's a sin, but cheating on your wife is no big deal. Are y'all hearing me? And then when you go to the New Testament in Thessalonians, the actually, before we get to that, let's define lawlessness here. They're going to put that up on the screen. Let me give you a definition for lawlessness. Lawlessness means to be without regard for the principles and regulations established by a governing body to be uncontrolled, unruly, disorderly, or unbridled. Now please take notice of those things. And finally, it is a disregard for God's laws and His order. A disregard for God's laws and His order. And more and more we see lawlessness rise in the land. And when you go to the next passage in, Thess in Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians 2, beginning at verse 3, the primary trait that he gives of the spirit of Antichrist is this spirit of lawlessness. And this is what the scripture says. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And with that falling away, sometimes we've interpreted that in terms of the church. The Greek word there is apostasia. It refers to an apostasy, a falling away. But that's not just the church. That's also the world turning away in an antichrist spirit, away from anything to do with God, that hates anything to do with God. Let no one deceive you. That day will not come unless the falling away comes first and the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or what is worshipped so that he sits as God in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was still with you I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. In other words, thank God the presence of the Holy Spirit is still in the earth. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. I don't want to be here when the Holy Ghost is gone. And then the, then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according, he's talking about the Antichrist, is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. They did not receive the love of the truth. I want to ask you today, I'm not talking about you agreeing with me, I'm talking about do you love the truth? that you've got to have a love of the truth. We've come to a time, it's not about truth anymore, it's just about who can spin things to their advantage. Who can portray a certain image? Who can make it sound good? Who can make it sound pleasing? And who can sway the masses? And, and who can put a certain spin on the truth? But God's people are characterized by a love of the truth. That whether it's what I like or not or whether it's what's comfortable or not, I'm standing on the truth because I love the truth. Amen. We don't care about truth anymore. We just care about image. And we've seen this. It has come in phases and we're seeing it even now. For a number of years now, the devil has done his best See, we think, they want us to think everything was always this way in America. No, everything wasn't always this way in America or in the earth. For years, the devil has tried to so blur the line between good and evil 
that people don't know one from the other anymore. There's no black and white. It's all shades of gray and probably 50 different shades of gray. Come on. And everything's fuzzy and there are no absolutes. You say, well, pastor, it's a free country. People can live however they want to live. Listen, it may be a free country in one sense. They can choose an immoral lifestyle if they want to, but when they go forcing that immoral lifestyle on the rest of society and forcing the rest of a society to accept and approve that lifestyle, that is lawlessness. And we have, and it's not just one, high-ranking government officials who choose when they are in office to only enforce the parts of the law that they happen to agree with. And the rest of it, they skip over and act like it doesn't exist. And that is lawlessness. And in recent days, in addition to everything with the virus, we have witnessed, unfortunately, terrible, terrible, beyond words, unspeakable, terrible, heinous acts of racial hatred and racial prejudice. And it's awful. And there is no room for that. Racial bigotry and those racial incidents of hatred, that's, that's a kind of lawlessness in and of itself. How many of you know it may sound simple, and I guess it is simple theology, but it's the truth. Jesus loves the little children of the world, red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. And it's awful. And there's no place for us to condone that. And I heard, I, I didn't get to go, it was over before I knew about it, but they told me there was some kind of walk or protest even here in Corbin, and with our racial history here in Corbin, that's probably a good thing. So the racial it, 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 incidents have been unspeakably awful, and there's probably some places for reform. But in the midst of that, there have, I hope I don't lose friends over this, but I'm going to preach the word. There have been calls in major American cities to completely do away with, to completely abolish the police force with nothing to replace it. Folks, that's lawlessness. I said that's lawlessness. That's the spirit of the Antichrist. You can't condone that. And the, the spirit behind that that is driving that is not a motive for, for many people. It's not a motive. It's not driven by a motive to do away with racism. It's driven by a spirit of lawlessness. That is the spirit of Antichrist. And folks, when we're coming, that should alarm us. It shouldn't cause us to live in terror, but it should cause us to pray. God, we've got to have you come and show up and bring rule in the midst of this mess. God, if you don't show up, we're in trouble. Because we see lawlessness rising in the land in a way that we've never seen before. And what happens is always whether it's in the church or in the world when there is a danger of lawlessness we go to the other extreme of legalism that we have to legislate everything that we have to make rules for everything and the reason we try to make rules for everything to modify people's outward behavior is because they're rotten in their heart 
because if they got right in their heart, it would take care of the outward behavior if Jesus got a hold of the inside. So we think we have to legislate it from the outside because we see society unraveling at the seams and things coming apart and there's lawlessness and so we respond in legalism. That there's got to be a law or a rule for everything. And regardless of how you feel about some of those issues, whether it's name brands or, or, or monuments or gun control or whatever it is, regardless of how you feel about some of that, the point is we think we've got to make a rule and a law for everything. We go to legalism because we see lawlessness rearing its head and we know we can't survive that. I mean, God, help us that we got to take Paul Patrol off the air. Come on. Because it gives a positive portrayal of a police officer, little dog or something, and we got to take him off the air. You know, there, there was a time, listen to me, when I was growing up, is anybody hearing me? And I always insert, and I'm not that old. When, we, when a lot of us were going to school, some kid, some bozo, flick a spitwad at you, you turn around and say, I'm going to kill you. Well, they, nobody thought you were going to kill him. We knew we were kidding. We knew we were playing. But today, if a kid says, I'm going to kill you, he'll probably land up in the principal's office and maybe in front of the judge. Because my point is, we've come to a time that this legalism and legislating everything into every area of our lives is a response because there's a devil loose. There's a spirit of lawlessness in the land. And when you look now I'm headed somewhere. This is basically all introduction. <coughs> when you look at the statistics, which they're going to put on the screen, basically, look at me just a second, then we'll go to the screen. Basically, all of the social ills that we can't figure out how to fix, that we think a certain party needs to solve, or a certain politician, or we want to create a new law for. You know what it, you say, where, where does that, where does this, this lawlessness, and it's not getting any better, where does that come from? I'll tell you where it comes from. Lawlessness is the product of fatherlessness. Lawlessness is the product of fatherlessness. Because we've had a generation grow up an orphan generation that had no boundaries, that never had anybody to speak into their life and thought we were doing them a favor and then when it all is going to hell in a handbasket, we wonder what in the world's going on. Listen, part of, and I'm just going to touch this and go to something else and then come back, but <clears throat> part of what we do with some of, in this house, some of the ministry that God, and, and I'll be so glad when we can get back to some of that because it's part of our calling. I believe there's an anointing for freedom that God can set people free in this place. Anybody besides me believe? I believe that. And it, a lot of times as men and women come off drugs or out of addiction or whatever, 
or, or even just dealing with a, a, a young adult generation that we're trying to reach. A lot of the time, you know what it amounts to? We're trying to be mothers and fathers to people who never had one, to people who never had a generation that never had anybody to speak in their life. It's not because we think we know it all. It's just because we love you enough to come alongside. You may have never had anybody to do it, to put their arm around you and say, even when you fall, I'll be here to pick you up <clears throat> this is all from fatherless homes 63 and listen folks I'm not this is not scripture this is just statistics now scripture teaches the same thing but listen to the statistics 63% of youth suicides are from fatherless homes. 90%, 90% of homeless and runaway children are from fatherless homes. 85% of children with behavioral disorders, fatherless homes. 71% of high school dropouts, 75% of adolescent chemical abuse patients that's three fourths three out of four of them 70% of juveniles in state run institutions and 85% of youths in prison came from a fatherless home now I'm not here I think that's all that screen isn't it I, I, I think I if, there, if I had more put it up there but if, I think that's it Listen, if you're here this morning and you wish your life circumstances were different, this is not to beat you down and you can't change your past. But with God's help, you can do something about your present and your future. You can find some godly men whether it's me or other leaders in this church, I guarantee there's somebody in this house that if you really want somebody in your life, God will help you, or, or a, a lady who can be a mother in your life, God will help you to get somebody in your life. But most of all, there's a heavenly father. Because I want to give you, without trying to sound presumptive, pre presumptive, May I give you the cure for all of this? Because I am talking about lawlessness, but I'm also talking about fatherlessness. Because here's the cure. Give me my next scripture. <clears throat> Romans 8 and 15. You did not receive the spirit of adoption again to fear, but you received or you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Somebody praise him. <clears throat> you know what we need in the church and what we need in America? We need a spirit of adoption. We need a spirit of adoption. I've got good news today. A man may have let you down, but the God I serve, he's not an absentee father. He's not an abusive father. He's ever present to help in the time of trouble, and he cares about you. I cannot explain adequately articulate in 25 or so listen I know we live in a culture and I know there's been a lot of men fail I understand that and I'm so sorry but we live in a culture who says that Men and fathers are optional to the rearing of children. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. Amen. Can, I, can I tell you something? 
they're not here today so it wouldn't embarrass them Jennifer and I shared I was talking to Brother Danny on the way in this morning this I mean this as an absolute testimony to the grace of God part of the reason I wasn't perfect but I gave them everything I had and part of the reason that my daughters didn't go looking a lot of other places was because they found something at home where they were loved and accepted and yesterday we married off our second daughter and so we will we have now married off both our daughters by this is sheer grace of God sheer because there have been parents who did the right thing and their kids still made some poor choices so you don't need to beat yourself up you need to keep praying okay some of you had a mom or a grandmama praying for you and you still went down some roads you wish you hadn't but our, both our daughters by the sheer grace of God married good Christian men and both couples all four of them got married and all four of them Christians and virgins now brother that's a testimony this day and age hallelujah you say well wouldn't God forgive them sure God would forgive them but I don't want them to deal with a lot of the mess that I've seen people deal with carry the baggage and some of you still trying to deal with baggage God forgave you but there's still some stuff you got to work through and in 25 or so years of ministry the deepest wounds without exception that we have ever seen or tried to minister to people through are father wounds and they don't like this and they don't like for anybody to say it but I've dealt with it enough years most of the time, not every time, but most of the, about 80 or 90% of the guys, of the people coming through recovery, there's a father issue somewhere. And typically, when, when, when we've ministered to people in it coming, coming out of, by God's grace, come, and we're seeing that happen too, coming out by God's grace out of alternate lifestyles and homosexual lifestyles, nine times out of 10, it was a father issue. It's a father issue. God can put people in your life to help you, but most of all, I want to tell you Romans 8, 15, there's a spirit of adoption. Come on, we need it to wash over America that we have a father who loves us, that we have a father who cares. He's not absentee, he's not abusive, he's ever present, and he has an inheritance. You've got a father who loves you. I'll try to move on, but I need to tell somebody today. I don't care how long the road has been, how much time has gone by. There's a father who believes in you. There's a father who has a plan and a purpose for you. He loves you unconditionally. Now let me give you this, and I'm, I'm done with this. I'm talking about lawlessness and fatherlessness I hope you're okay I'm going to be honest this one made me a little bit nervous this morning but I've got to preach the word regardless look give me my last patch, passage of scripture from Peter and, and this, is, this is the instruction that he gives to us everybody with me 1 Peter 4, beginning at verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and be watchful. Come on, this is not a game. Be serious and be watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling. As each one has received a gift, 
minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it with the, as with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now basically, right in that passage of Scripture, I love to preach expository, just verse by verse, right through the Scripture. I don't always do it, but I love to. And if you'll just walk through this passage, in the context, are y'all hearing me? Of the last days, these are the best of times, these are the worst of times. Lawlessness and fatherlessness. But basically, in this passage of Scripture, specifically in the context of the last days, he tells us to do three things. Three things, that's what, he, in, in this passage. Number one, he said, pray. Look at me. Everybody smile. Quit asking everybody else to pray if you ain't praying. <clears throat> There's really not much point. You know, we can talk about everything else. We can talk about everybody else. Can't talk to the Lord. One woman, years ago, one woman came up to Uncle Bud, Uncle Bud Robinson and said, Preacher said, I want to lay my tongue on the altar. He looked down, it's about 12 feet long. He said, Sister, I wish you could, but it ain't long enough. We talked to everybody else, we talked about everything else. You pray. Can I tell you, I mean this. The only reason I've made it is because I prayed. If I hadn't prayed, if I hadn't prayed, I wouldn't have made it. To this day, I tell you, a lot of the reason I'm here, I've been a kid in the house and gone by the door and heard that woman sobbing on the other side. And when my dad prayed, you could hear him all over the house. Everybody knew dad was praying. Then when my dad was laying on his deathbed, the person he was happier to see than anybody else come visit him was J.K. Barino. And they joined hands and pray together. You gotta, first thing he says is you gotta pray. The second thing he says is you gotta love. Listen, hear me, and I've had to learn some of this. They will do stuff you don't like. They will do stuff you don't agree with. Because, of course, you know you never did anything like that for your parents. They, they, they will do stuff you wish they didn't. But you've got to keep loving One of the things I've learned over the years with all kind of people, sometimes to the point of just telling them, looking them dead in the eye so they knew I was sincere and meant it, and sometimes with tears, and say, listen, you know I may not agree with this, but I want you to know one thing. I love you no matter what you do. I remember, I don't know why I got to think about this other I'm trying to wind down, not very hard, but we were pastoring our first church. And it, it's just the grace of God. We were pastoring our first church. And when we first went there, of course, the, like every church I've ever gone to, it was in a financial mess. And uh, so every summer they'd sell fireworks on the Walmart parking lot to help pay the bills. And uh, we didn't enjoy it, but you needed to do it. Y'all been out on that parking lot with me. You know what I'm talking about. And somebody have to sleep. I've slept on a cot because you love the Lord and love the church. Stay with the fireworks overnight so somebody didn't steal you blind. 
And everybody would come up, have you got, no, that's illegal, of course. We're a church on Walmart parking lot. We're not selling illegal stuff. A thousand times. Anyway, there was a guy, he actually lived across the street from us. He showed up on the lot one day. He was a Vietnam vet, and he had, he had a lot of issues. He was unstable. And uh, one of the women in the church there, she should have had a little more wisdom. She may have meant well, but she was talking to him, and he got agitated. And uh, I'm just a young 20-something. I don't know what I'm doing. Just pray. Ask God to help you. He got over and got up in my face. And he said, what would you do if I just hit you and laid you out right here? And so help me God, I figured he was getting ready to. Because that's the way he was acting. Some of my church members were around. He said, what if I just laid you out right here? I called his name and I said, listen. I, I stood right up in his face and I said, listen. If God would help me, I'd get right up off this ground and tell you again that Jesus loves you. Loving doesn't mean we always agree with everybody. Sometimes, especially your children. You pray for them and you love them. And I tell you the third thing he said in that passage, and I'm done. And he's talking about what to do in the last days. He, the third thing he said was, and we don't expect this one, he said operate in spiritual gifts. Operate in spiritual gifts. Baby, that ain't just for the church when we're having a shout them up service. There have been times Jennifer and I were praying and God gave us a prophetic word over one of our daughters and let us know what was going on or how to, she'll tell you <laughs> some days I'll testify for you. B.C. and B.M. Before Christ and before Mark. <laughs> that she was some places that she wouldn't have been had she done it over. That, her, that she's here today because the Holy Ghost woke her mama up in the middle of the night and told her what she was doing. You need... God will give the operation of spiritual gifts right in your home. It doesn't have to be at church. Come on. He'll show you. He'll speak to you. He'll tell you some things. He'll let you know what's going on. If we're going to be spirit-filled, let's be spirit-filled so our kids know we're the real deal. We walk in the power of the Holy Ghost, and if they're living in sin, God will show us, and we'll call them on it. Stand with me.